When the fighting in World War II was at its height, he enlisted. He joined the army, he shipped out, he saw combat in Europe. And when he came back, he went to Harvard. He got his PhD. And with his Harvard PhD, he moved to Washington, took a job as an astronomer with the U.S. Army Map Service in 1956. In 1957, the U.S. Army Map Service fired him because he was gay. What do you do when you're fired from your job for being gay and it's 1957? If you are pretty much anybody other than Frank Kameny, you do nothing. You try to get away from this scandal. But if you are Frank Kameny, you fight it. You fight it all the way to the Supreme Court in 1961. To my knowledge, that was the first gay rights legal brief ever filed. And I must say, after half a century, it still reads pretty well. And, uh, uh, but did it win? No. Uh, it was filed at the end of January 1961, inconsistent and not unexpectedly with the culture of the day. Uh, in March of 61, the Supreme Court uh, denied the petition, which ended my own personal case. But I've been faced with the issues. It was clear enough that something needed to be done. So I founded the gay movement here in Washington. And as seen in retrospect, uh, that initiated as I said a few minutes ago, gay activism and militancy generally, and things proceeded from there. Things proceeded from there. Slight understatement. Uh, it was not until eight years after his Supreme Court case that the Stonewall riots happened uh, in New York in 1969. Stonewall is often credited as the start of the movement for gay people's civil rights in this country. But a decade before Stonewall, before Harvey Milk even moved to San Francisco, there was Frank Kameny and his Supreme Court case. Before Stonewall, there was Frank Kameny founding the Mattachine Society. Before anybody had any idea, there could be a gay organization of any kind. There was Frank Kameny in 1965 in a suit marching on the White House for gay rights. And through it all, Frank Kameny kept spectacular records. By the time the government was ready to stop firing him for being gay and instead to formally apologize to him for that, as they did a couple of years ago, by the time Washington, D.C. was ready to stop just arresting him and instead start naming two blocks of 17th Street after him, after declaring his home a historic landmark for being the headquarters of the earliest gay rights movement in the country, by the time he was personally there to witness a presidential executive order for same-sex partners' benefits and the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, by the time Frank Kameny's decades of fighting mostly alone were finally being recognized as the start of something that changed the country. Frank Kameny was ready for it. He was prepared. He had kept records when the Smithsonian and the Library of Congress came knocking on his door to see if he had any stuff they might put on display so other people could study the movement that he kind of started. He had 70,000 pages of documents for them, 70,000 pieces of paper and artifacts from his time and his fight, which you as an American can see now at the Smithsonian and at the Library of Congress as part of the story of how we became who we are as a country, of who pushed and pulled and fought to get us where we are now. We all have decisions to make about how to live this one life we have. Frank Kameny's choices about how to live his life changed all of our lives, changed the world for all of us and forever. Frank Kameny died yesterday in his sleep. He was 86 years old.